everybody welcome back to my channel if you're new i'm joni young and i'm going to show you guys today how to paint a beautiful spring landscape so i've got my cherry blossom tea set out ready for the season i see new buds in my garden and i'm so excited i've got all those spring vibes and feels and i just thought it would be kind of nice to have a cup of tea with you guys before i begin a painting and I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you're excited about the new season and love spring as much as I do. It means new beginnings, new growth, and I absolutely feel my best in springtime. So I'm not completely sure what I'm gonna paint yet today. I've got a few ideas. Um, I know right now there's a few things uh, blossoming. There's crocuses, there are snowdrops, um the cherry blossoms are starting to bud uh, so i'm gonna have to pick one of those and go with it um so i hope you guys are excited to see what i paint today i'm gonna make it a tutorial for you so you can all follow along step by step and i'll go through the brushes the colors how much water i use when i'm not using water all of that packed into one video uh, stay tuned don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already it helps my channel grow so more and more people out there that want to learn how to paint in acrylics can see my channel and join our channel and our family we've got here um, and paint along with us so uh, thanks for watching you guys I hope you enjoy this video and let's go ahead and get started okay everybody so I've got the colors on my palette here and these two colors, Neon Red and Neon Luminous Rose, they're by Holbein. You don't have to have neon colors to follow along. You can use any red and any magenta uh, that you want, or even pink. Uh, I just like to let you know, because a lot of you guys are curious about the brands of paint that I'm using. So again, these two are neon or luminous paints by Holbein. And then I've got Light Blue Violet, Dioxazine Purple, Burnt Sienna, and Titanium White. These top row of paints are all by Liquitex Basics Acrylics, but again, you can use any brand of paint that you want. I personally prefer heavy bodied acrylics, um, but you may have um, a thinner paint that you use and that's just fine as well. So I'm gonna start working on the background of this painting and I'm gonna be using my number 30 Filbert brush. And the first color I'm gonna be using is my light blue violet. I'm just gonna get my brush a little bit wet. So there's just a bit of moisture in here and that'll be enough to help blend my acrylics out. So I'll just take a little bit of this light blue violet. It's so pretty. And watch how it just will glow against this gray background. So I'm just gonna apply these short little brush strokes, crisscrosses, And I'm going to continue with the blue down towards the bottom of the canvas. And towards the center. Then I'm gonna go right over to my white without washing my brush out. By this time, you should have worked out almost all of the blue out of your brush. So there might just be a little hint of it in there, which will be enough to blend in nicely with our white. So I'm gonna apply the same brush stroke over here on the left. and just gently work my way in to that blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush and I'm gonna start in the corner I'm gonna add a few little soft sun rays, so I'm just gonna gently pull and sweep diagonally. And 
I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to take a little bit of purple now. And I'm going to go on the edge of the right hand side of the canvas. Apply all the paint there so it's the darkest. And then pick up a little bit more of my blue. And I'm going to start to crisscross them together. To blend. Pick up more blue whenever you need to. And then I'm just going to gently pull what's left on my brush with a little bit of water to help loosen it. See how thin and transparent it is? I'm just gonna add that there for now. And I think I'm starting to get an idea. I've been wanting to paint a fox. I think foxes are so cute. And I've been wanting to paint a fox for a little while and I thought, how could I incorporate a little fox in the springtime? So maybe have the fox on this side, looking up towards the light and kind of just set in a little bed of snowdrops, the little snowdrop flowers. They're so pretty and delicate looking. So this will be the beginning of uh, the painting. We've got a nice background here to work with. I'm gonna wash my brush out again. And I'm just going to take a little bit of white and just tap like this. And I'm just going to add a little bit of maybe snow covered patchy ground here before we come in with our snowdrops that are coming out of, in between the snow. Kind of represents the in between two seasons stage. Then I'm going to take my purple, a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'm going to start dabbing down here, dark patches here for our, our little snowdrop flowers. That we'll add after um, we paint our fogs because I want the snowdrop flowers to be in front and have it look like the fox, little fox is kind of resting in and amongst all those pretty little flowers. to a smaller brush now and we'll start blocking in the basic shape. We're going to keep it really, really simple. You can all follow along. I like to freehand. I find that's just easier for me, um, but many of you like to sketch first. Um, so if you want to do that, feel free to do that. Go ahead, approach it any way you feel comfortable with. But if you ever want to try freehanding, it is just as it's called free. You feel so free when you're doing it and it kind of is like drawing you're just using a paintbrush so that's how i've always looked at it anyways i've got a number is it a number eight i think it's a number eight filbert brush so just choose any small brush that you feel comfortable with for um blocking in the basic shape and i'm going to start it with this purple and a little bit of burnt sienna this will be our 
um, base coat to build up all our layers, ultimately to the brightest highlights of this little fox. So I'm gonna start, find our center point, the middle of the canvas is right here. I'm gonna go down an inch or so and move over a couple inches. So actually the edge of the bar on my canvas here is where I'm gonna line it up. And that's gonna be his nose, his hers. I'm gonna come around and just make like a rounded triangle. Then we're going to have his nose and right about here and then bring it up just slightly, slightly for around the eye and the head. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to my brush. Okay, again, we've got the nose. Now his mouth is going to be somewhere right in here. We'll just add a little line there. And then a line where it just dips down here before it goes up is we're going to just scoop and over like that for his eye and then the hairline kind of comes up. So I like to look at the basic shapes and patterns first that stand out to me the most in a reference photo if I'm working from one, which I am right now. And then I go from there. We're going to come out, 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 slightly diagonal like this, and then straight here, and then diagonal here, and then the legs. And the legs are going to be, his paws are going to be pretty hidden within the snowdrops. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that detail. I'll just fumble shade a little bit here where his, his legs are the darkest. Add a little bit of water now, then this paint out a little bit again. And then there's a little triangle an empty triangle here, just the background showing. So we'll start that right here. These back legs and paws or feet. <laughs> and then this is all kind of hidden in like snow and the bottom part of him, right? This little snow and um, our snowdrop flowers that are going to be here. Now his other leg, he's got the one here and the other one is right next to it. So we'll just see like a line. But remember, right now, all we're doing, if you're just joining me, joining us, we're just blocking in the basic shape. So again, here's the line for his eye. And his eye is closed because he's just super relaxed, looking at, not really looking up, but he's, his face is pointing up to, I think, the sun. He's probably thinking, I'm so glad that spring is coming. <laughs> and now his ear, it's like an almond shape. So you can just 
kind of shade in a little bit by wiggling your brush. It's going to be darker here. And then this area here is going to be all cream and white. And then it's got a little bit of fur, very soft fur. And you can sweep and scoop with your filbert brush to get that look. And then right off the canvas, the fur gets smoother and flatter on his back. Just rinsing my brush out. And I'm going to loosen this up a little bit here. His nose will be up a little bit higher. Let's take a little bit more of our purple. If you want to use black for the darkest parts of your painting, you can go ahead. I just don't like using black if I don't have to, if I can get away with it. I choose color all the time when I can, because it's more fun for me to use color. It's how I express myself. Sometimes you do just need black and black can be really striking in a painting. I'm just coming around and using the Daxazine purple actually is really close to black when it dries. Just outlining those dark areas. And then taking a little bit more of that purple and just bringing it down here. Just shading in the fur and the legs. So this area here, I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna with my purple. This is kind of comes up. in a point right here, the markings, where it's the darkest. And then bring his little paws up. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, what I'm going to do is start coming in with a white now. I'm going to tint it a little bit with burnt sienna to start. And we'll get a very soft cream, warm cream color here. And I'm just going to Bring that over top of the purple. Scoop and go up. And gentle little flicks for the hair. So I'm just bringing those little flicks in different directions 
according to how his ear hair goes. So it kind of turns over here. And this is going to dry a little bit darker. This is just the next color we're adding. I'm going to build it up and add more and more um, white and burnt sienna. So we're going to come right in here. A little bit more white. Scoop down slightly over his mouth line. And then gently up. This is when I'm going to pick up a little bit more burnt sienna. I'm going to add that in between. And then sliding my brush back and forth. Get really close to the line of his eye. I'm gonna pick up some more burnt sienna. Get even closer. So it gradually gets darker towards that purple. And then we're just going to lightly flick and bring that around. Let's pick up a little bit more. I'm going to place my pinky here where I know it's dry. That way I can steady my hand. We're going to bring that around the purple line of his eye. And then gently flick. And start to just slide your brush back and forth, short little strokes. And then start to come in here, right up to the darkest outline. You want to keep that really dark. Pick up a little bit more of the burnt sienna. And then the pattern changes. So here goes around, 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 and it kind of looks like a feather. And then in here, it goes over and then kind of twists and swirls like that. And I can see I've got a lot of paint building up in my brush, so I'm just going to move that. Add more of a sort of caramel shade right in there. And then go into more of that cream color. Here it gets a little brighter. I'm going to start right in here. It helps if your brush is really flat. So kind of just wiggle it and then add the paint to the tip of your brush. And you don't want to apply too much pressure. So you just want to create little lines. Add a little bit more bird sienna, mix it up. Now kind of the pattern goes around like this. So I'll take a little bit more burnt sienna, it gets a little darker. Mm -hmm. 
How's everybody doing so far? Let me know in the comments if you're watching my live chat right now. Hey, and welcome. So I'll just continue along. The shape of the hair is kind of going here and then starts to change direction. I'm going to show you a really cool technique in a minute. I just wanted to show you how to do it with this brush first. If you don't have a the next brush I'm going to be using. Okay, I'm going to take some white. I'm going to come down. I'm going to be a little line separating each side of his mouth under his nose. I'm just going to work all this out of my brush. Scoop up some more white. And then again, it really helps if you place your pinky. Now, depending on what hand you use to paint, don't let it throw you off that I'm left-handed. I learned to paint by watching Bob Ross, who's not who wasn't left-handed. Um, you just <laughs> do what I'm doing, but do it with your right hand. So don't get confused by that. I know some people overthink it, and it's not necessary. You just do the same thing I'm doing with your right hand, but it really helps to steady your hand for uh, detailed things like that. Helps give you more control. Okay, I'm going to be switching over to a fan brush. I'm going to show you guys how you can get a really effective real fur look by using a fan brush. So I've got this one here, and this one happens to be a number two. You might have one a little smaller or even a little bigger than this. I think that um, it's a good idea to stay around this size or even smaller because the fox we're painting, it's not that big. This is just a really, really good side, size. So I'm gonna actually get my brush wet, and this is where you want it to turn into a rake. You know, you want those uh, bristles to um, separate into little chunks like that so it looks like a little rake, okay? And then I'm going to take a little bit of white, just dip it in there. I'm going to steady my hand here. Well, actually, I don't think I need to yet. And I'm just going to start creating those same brush strokes. See how you get multiple lines? And it really looks like fur. So I'm going to change the direction because it curls around here. And then you can just do these short little gentle delicate flicks on the end to make it look like soft fur. So this is how you want to load it to keep it separate like this. If it's hard to pull it out, you might need a little bit of water to help.
I love using the fan brush for not only fur, um, but water, like for waves. It's just a fantastic brush. I'm going to keep going. Everywhere you want it to look really fuzzy. This, the softest fur kind of reminds me of my dog Tilly. She's got just the softest fur. Really nice coat on her. She actually kind of looks a little fox-like, <laughs> but black and white. You guys have seen her. Most of you, unless you're brand new to my channel. Okay, and now I'm going to start coming in with burnt sienna, a little water again, and still a little bit of white in there. So just follow the direction I'm scooping and creating these or applying these short little flicks. The longer the hair, right, then you'll just pull a little longer before you let off. But isn't this a great technique with this brush? It's really effective. Instead of using a liner brush taking forever. A little bit of purple in there, a little purple to just deepen this where we have some darker lines. And then I'll just turn my brush right, you can use it kind of straight up and down like that. So we've got a little bit more depth within the fur here by adding a little bit of purple to the burnt sienna. This way when we come in with our lighter shades, it'll just have way more depth to it. The hair down here gets a little longer, so pull longer before I let off. Pull and then his back leg sticks out here, so that's creating a little dark area in there. Just add a little bit more of the purple to the burnt skin again. Hope you guys are all enjoying this video so far and having fun learning how to paint a little fox soon to be in snowdrop flowers. I think he's looking up at the sky, the facing the sun and just feeling thankful that he got through another winter and signs of spring are everywhere. Flowers starting to bloom. That's my interpretation. And that's how I feel. Excited and hopeful for spring. So 
So you can add a little bit of water here and there to really thin your paint out to help you create these brush strokes. Now we're going to come in with um, some more burnt sienna and white, making some lighter tones gradually, a little bit lighter. And I'll be coming in, I'm going to use the corner of my brush here. Flick. you're an artist like me that loves movement and swirly lines you can have fun with this little fox's fur coat because it really is very graceful looking with the pattern you start to see how it changes and kind of swirls and then you can exaggerate a little bit too, and that's how you really make it your own and feel really like a painting and a piece of art rather than a photo. Take a little bit more burnt sienna with my white. I've got this nice cream color. Again, this area, we're gonna do longer sweepy strokes. So it's going to dry a little darker than this. So you want to check back after two. It's really soft and kind of fuzzy in here. So I'm just going to kind of make it look a little blurry. Um, you want to come back when it's dry or just, you know, use a hair dryer to speed it up if you don't want to wait and see how it dries and know if you need to add another layer of highlights. Then we're going to smooth out his back. One of my um, patrons, Patreon members, requested more animals from me. So I don't paint a lot of animals because I just don't really... I love animals. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love them. Um, I just never think that I do them justice because they're just such beautiful creatures and I don't know I think I'm my own horse critic so let me know if you guys want to see more animals if you enjoy my animal tutorials I've got horses uh, birds butterflies um, owls I can't think how many different animals. oh elephants So I've got a playlist if you guys want to look through that and definitely leave a request down under this video letting me know. I always enjoy reading your comments. I tend to do that first thing in the morning, get my cup of coffee. I have my coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon. <laughs> and um, yeah, it makes my morning reading all your comments and I try to answer everybody, but um, it's getting harder and harder to do that. Um, that's actually not a bad thing because it means my channel is growing and I'm getting a lot of comments. Um, so if I haven't answered you back, please don't take it personally. I am reading all of your comments though, and I try to keep up, but you know, it's, it's difficult to 
answer everybody. I'm going to take a little bit of my red here before it dries and add that to the burnt sienna. This was my plan before to come back and add a little bit of fiery red to this beautiful fox. So by adding it, the red in with the burnt sienna, we'll be able to get a nice warm shade of red. Picking up a little bit of water, again, helps separate the uh, bristles. So I took a, a long break while I was um, recovering with COVID and I slept. I mean, the one good thing that came out of it, there's always a silver lining. I caught up on my sleep. Um, ladies out there around my age, you know what I'm talking about. It gets harder and harder to sleep the older we get. So <laughs> the one good thing um, that happened throughout this, I'm gonna take a little bit of burnt sienna and dioxazine purple while I'm chatting. Um, the one good thing was that I was able to get a lot of rest and I feel like a new person, to be honest. Like I'm really, really um, more myself than I've been in a long time and thoroughly enjoying my channel. I think I just, you know, really appreciate now the fact that I was able to just come in and paint whenever I wanted and feel fine. Um, when you're sick, you start to, it's, it's not fun being sick, but you start to appreciate things more, all the little things. So um, anybody not feeling well out there, recovering from something, getting ready to have surgery, whatever your issue is. I read a lot of comments and get a lot of messages from you guys. I want to send you love, healing, and um, I wish you a speedy recovery. I'm coming in with straight white now, okay? I'm going to make this a little brighter in here, these areas. We've still got that little hint of cream. But yeah, it feels uh, great to be back in my studio and have the mental clarity back again because I had what they call COVID brain. I just kept thinking about coming in here and I could not, I really couldn't concentrate. It was so frustrating, but I just ended up watching a lot of shows that I wanted to. and just having some rest and recuperation. I'm loving this little fox. Let me know what you guys think. So all I'm doing is coming in with some more light highlights now, a little bit of watered down cream here, just that burnt sienna along with some white and the water. I'm just going to use my finger to blend here a little bit. And I just scoot carefully around his eye.
Okay, gonna add some more water to my brush and really loosen this paint up. I'm gonna add a few short brush strokes, shorter little flicks like this for to create that those layers there. You'll know when you need water because you'll have a hard time. This is how you know you have enough water. You should be able to make it very feathery. It should be effortless. So I want you to pay attention to how I'm holding my brush now. Like instead of wide like that, turning it this way. So you give it some different layers within the fur and then you can turn it the other way for those longer ones and then we're going to change the direction we're going to bring short brush strokes of fur coming in So it goes out and then sort of pulls over this way. Take a little bit of burnt sienna and purple in with that. Okay, so what I want to do is take a liner brush, I've got a long liner brush here, and I'm going to take my purple again, whoops, bring that line over there, such a cute little nose, what a cute face. I'm going to take a little bit of blue in with it. Then, go into that eye area again. I'm going to place my pinky here, steady my hand. Scoop down. Over. And just Open his ear a little bit. Loosen that paint up with some water. Take a little bit of burnt sienna with a little bit of white. Get a little bit on the tip of my brush. Bring that around his eye. I'm gonna switch over to uh, my little round brush. And I've got a number three brown brush. Just any small round brush will do. I bring a little bit of white scoop down like that and 
And then I'm going to take, push a little bit of that off, change the direction of it of his mouth. I'm going to go back over to my filbert brush. I'm going to add purple again. Make this darker down here for his feet. And then just gently pull and flick a little bit down there. I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. So it looks like he's kind of sitting in the snow before we come in with our snow drops. This color's really pretty, isn't it, with all the other colors? I'm applying it quite thick. I'm going to take a little bit of that blue and white, mix it up. I'm going to tap in a little bit of the shadow there. And should add some whiskers, shouldn't we? So I'm going to add, with my liner brush again, purple, water down. And I'm going to add really short fast brush strokes and come down just past his mouth. Then take a little bit more of the purple and we'll add little dots. Dot, 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 dot. And then if some of them look a little thick, you can pull out a few more on top of those. I'm going to come around with some white, go under, up, and around. Okay, and now I'm going to add some snowdrops. There is a color though I haven't used yet, and it is my Luminous Rose. So I do want to incorporate this because it is such a pretty color. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of Burnt Sienna to that rose. And we'll see what that gets us. It's such a pretty color. Definitely more rose for ratio. More rose than the Burnt Sienna. I'm going to add a little bit of um, sap green to my palette because actually I forgot to do that and I need that for the stems of my flowers. So I'm just adding a little bit of this beautiful rose here. I like to use color and enhance things with color wherever I can and a lot of people right away just kind of discount 
the benefits of using neon paints. They're beautiful and you should try them at least once. <laughs> I think that's all it took for me was one try and I fell in love with them. Take a little bit more purple now. Get his mouth a little bit thicker. Had a few lines in there for his legs. Okay, guys, I think I am ready for our flowers, and I'm going to be using my little round brush again. Just need to get out some of my green. I'll just put it right there. So to start, I'm going to use purple and green. I've got a nice and deep dark base. It'll be beautiful to build up our highlights from. Again, number three round brush, but you can use a liner brush too if you want. And you're going to come up from the bottom and apply a few lines. I just want a few signs of spring. I'm going to take a little bit of white and that sap green now. I didn't wash my brush out. Might be kind of nice to have a little bit of that uh, purple left over. I'm going to add a little oval shape right there. It's the top of the flowers before the petals. To mix up some more. I'll just have a few more here, kind of just off to the side. Take a little bit of a little bit extra white.
and add a little bit of white and blue now. Clean brush. Pour a little bit more tea here. Forgot about my little teapot. Hope it's still hot. Okay, so I'm going to come back now with a clean brush and white paint. And I'm going to add a little line under those little green ovals. A line or even a scoop sometimes and a few smaller ones for maybe a few little patches in the distance and then I'm going to push and pull Or a few petals. Now these will show up better on a darker background. So these ones here, I might add, need to add another um, layer once it's dry, or once they're dry. But the petals, they start narrow and then they get a little fatter and then narrower so you just let off on the pressure point push pull and let off point push let off it helps when you say the steps out loud And again, just a little bit here. Blurry, out of focus ones. And then there's, there are some that are a little bit more open. So that's why I'm changing it up down here, creating a few more little loops. Those ones are on the other side, and this is the inside of the flower. These are the ones in the front. So you want them to be a little different you don't want them to all look the exact same. So some a little narrower. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my green and white again. I'm gonna go inside here. Inside some of these and on the top to add the top of the uh, stems. And a little bit more green. sort of add a little bit more 
around that light green part. But as much green as you want, really. a little bit more green and white. A few more blades of grass. Okay, now I'm going to come in and add another layer of highlights with my fan brush again, some white, a little bit of water, soft little brush strokes. Use those reds, burnt sienna. And a few more little tufts of hair in here. I'm really happy with this little fox. I'm excited to show my grandson too. I think he'll like it. Let me know if you guys would like to see more. I mentioned that earlier, if you're just joining us now. More animals from me. I'm happy to paint them. I'm gonna add a little bit more color in here, a little dab here. I know it's going to dry a little bit darker. It's nice to have a little bit of color, isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more white. And maybe warm up my white with a little bit of my, this is by Holbein, Luminous Yellow. It's a warm yellow, very golden. Just warm this, tint this white, the temperature. Got a little bit of purple in there, don't want that. And add well, just a hint of warm light from the sun. I'm just going back and forth, well, diagonally. Flicking off the corner there. 
making it the brightest at the very top. I'll add the final highlights here before I call this one done. A little bit of extra white on the top here. Little gentle brush strokes, make it look fuzzy. then add more to the flowers as they're drying. You can come in with a bright highlight, a brighter shade, and I'm going to apply it fairly thick. And I'm going to add more to these three here that are in the front. That way the other ones are darker and look more like they're on the other side. I'm just going to take a little bit of white and my neon red and a little bit of warm yellow and I think I just feel like I need to add a little bit of warmth right there to this little fox's cheek. I don't know why. I just think that would be cute. Just a little warmth right there. And a little bit of pink here on the side. I think it's kind of pretty. Finish this off with the last bit of white in, in here over part of that pink. And then a little bit of burnt sienna. green, white, and a little bit of uh, purple. Just to add a few more, a little bit of white as well in there. Just to make those show up a little bit better.
and a little bit of white inside some of the green parts on the top, just above the flowers. That will help them look more round and highlighted. Okay, everybody, this painting is all done. I love this little fox and I'm really happy I got to share it with you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any requests for animals, put them down there in the comments as well. I love reading all your comments and I look forward to sharing my next tutorial with you. Thanks again for watching. Um, I wish you guys all the best in your painting journey and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.